Hi everybody, my name is Lewis and today I'm going to be talking about how you can force your admins to use this bad boy when they're going to PIM. Alright guys, so we're going to be talking about how we're going to use authentication contacts and authentication contacts has just been released, well just has been released I guess a couple of weeks, months ago by Microsoft. Um, and an authentication context gives us the possibility to determine, hey, I'm going to authenticate, but you're not going to authenticate like normally. We are going to set the minimum on how you are required to authenticate. For example, text message mm -mm, is not going to do. Push notifications, no, not a valid MFA method for me. We are going to do the following. We are going to configure that when you PIM to a global admin, you are required to use your FIDO2 key and only that method is a valid method to authenticate and get your privileges. So okay, let's go. So you're probably wondering why is a FIDO2 key not fishable? Well, a FIDO2 key uses public key cryptography to verify the authenticity of the website who's requesting the user's credentials. This means that when the user enters his username and password, and they are prompted to do MFA, the FIDO key won't actually react because it's not the legitimate website which re he needs to respond to. FIDO2 key uses a cryptographic protocol called web authentication, which relies on a challenge response mechanism. And when a user logs into the, FIDO, you logs into the website using a FIDO key, um, the website sends a challenge which the challenge, the website right here would be Azure AD, sends a challenge to the key, which generates a response out of this bad boy. In here, there's a private key. And the FIDO2 key will create a response based on the, on the private key in this device. That response gets sent directly to Azure AD and Azure AD knows, okay, this is you. If the response is valid, the user can authenticate. Well, since the private key is stored securely on the FIDO2 key, it actually never leaves the device. The only thing that leaves the, the FIDO2 key is the response. The key itself can never be reused. And the token on its own, can, or, or the response, has only a lifetime of once. It can only be sent once, and after that, if it's passed on or ever intercepted, it cannot be used again. Furthermore, why, why do I love a FIDO2 key is because Besides being at the second authentication method, it also means that if you would have my password, my username, and I my solely authentication method would be this FIDO2 key, well, you would have to bash me in the head, get my fingerprint or know my pin code in order to get access. Because you need physical access. You need to physically have this guy plugged into your device to generate a token out of this private key. So, if you're brave enough to have a FIDO2 key as your solely authentication method, well, you're kind of covered against phishing attacks. Okay, so let's say we want to start using a FIDO2 key um, on my tenant. What do I need to do? Well, first of all, you need to enable the usage of FIDO2 keys by going to um, security, authentication methods, and there we're gonna say FIDO2 key, security keys, and you, well, basically, you're going to allow it for all users or, or select it for a group. I've done it for all my users because, hey, I support being secure. Up next, you want to go to conditional access. And in conditional access, we're going to go to authentication context. And here we're going to say, let's create a new authentication context. And let's say this authentication context is called... FIDO2 description force FIDO2 usage allowed to publish to apps. Um, it has an ID of C2. You can ignore that. The most important thing is this is like a container. So you know a reference of that you are going to be enforcing an authentication context. That's how I see it. You're going to do save. And up next, we are going to go to a conditional access policy. All right. So let's set up our conditional access policy. So we're gonna to go to conditional access, new policy, give it a, na a name. Um, I'm gonna skip the user assignment. We're gonna to go to the juicy stuff, which I had to break my head on first, is 
the cloud apps or actions? Well, authentication context is not scoped to when you authenticate to a certain application or cloud app. No, you're going to have this policy enforced when you go into a certain authentication flow. The fact that you are authenticating makes sure that conditional access policy will reevaluate and say, wait, you're authenticating, but how are you authenticating? That is what we're going to define right now. So we're going to say, no, this is an authentication context. And which authentication context are we going to mark this? This is like, I consider this as a box. We're going to configure this as the this FIDO2 key, which we just created in the previous screen. And we're going to say, okay, we're going to grant you access only when you use a certain method. We're going to say, you require a certain authentication strength. And we can choose between multi-factor authentication, so, such as password as a mess, password as MFA. It's also great and my dog is licking. Stop licking. Um, we can also do phishing resistant MFA, which is what we want. We want to use a FIDO2 key. We're going to do select. We could go, we could go crazy here, but I'm not going to elaborate on that. Let's just keep it plain and simple. And actually, I just have to select my users and we're good to go. Stop licking Silk. My dog, it, it, I hope you can hear her in the background, but she's licking her, her paw. She loves that. All right, so up next, we're going to set up Privilege identity management to enforce that my users who are going to pimp to a certain role need to use a FIDO2 key. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Azure AD roles, um, go to roles, and I think I'm going to set up an application developer, for example, can be any role. Um, you go to settings, you do edit because it's more visible there. Well, you basically have to edit it. And here we're going to say, hey, you have to use an Azure AD conditional access authentication context. It's in preview. And we're going to say, use your FIDO2, which is the, the context we just created and just insert it in our conditional access policy. This is the glue between the conditional access policy and PIM. And we're going to do update. Great. So now let's log into Alex and see if I have to use my, my, my FIDO2 key. All right, great. So I just logged into Alex Wilbur, um, set up my FIDO key to be used as a, an MFA method via aka.ms MFA setup. I'll show it on the screen. And let's go to PIM. Let's try to PIM. And let's say my roles, and I want to be an application administrator. You must know I'm currently logged in with an MFA method of text message. And I'm going to sign in. But hey, wait, I can't sign in, I can't do anything because a conditional access policy is enabled and may require additional verification. Click to continue. So right now my authentication method is being verified and I'm not in the correct flow. So I am forced to use a security key. The flow starts, they request me to touch my key, which is fingerprint. I'm authenticated and my flow starts, um, I need to work, and we're done. This is basically it, but this ensures that nobody can up their privileges without having this physical bad boy. I would recommend this, I would do it. I will recommend this to everybody, actually. So in about 15 minutes to 20 minutes, I've set this up, tested it, played with it, and it works brilliantly. It adds, it adds a great security layer, especially for my privileged accounts who want to up their um, authentic, well, up their privileges. It's an extra control when they're PIMing. It's not fishable. So their authentication flow is also secure on that point. Um, the guys of security, the SOC, if you have a SOC, they will love it because they will see an, an extra authentication method pop up, which they can really rely on. Um, and the price, well, there is a price, I think about 30 to 50 euros, depending on how expensive or, or fancy you want to go. But basic models against 30 to 50 euros will give you a fighter 2 key that works. Um, if you would ask me, hey, do we need to do this for all of our users? I don't think we're there yet. Um, it would be great if you would weapon or, or arm your, your 
administrators with this, get them to use it, get them familiar with it. How does it work? How does it feel? Because this will be the king to your kingdom and a great way to protect your whole company. <laughs> All right. Woo. So uh, I would like to thank you for watching this video. Um, thank you, Silke, for helping me creating this, this video. Um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, tweet me, write to me on LinkedIn. Um, even if you have some remarks or want to add something I missed or, or want to help explain to the community, feel free to do so. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.